Hello everybody and welcome to part 8 of our data visualization with Python with matplotlib tutorial series. In this video we're going to be talking about how we get data from the internet. So uh, what we're going to go ahead and do first is we'll get rid of this, this kind of commented out code. You, might, you can save that for your own records if you want, but we're going to start building just with NumPy. So first of all, we, we want to like, you know, pull some information offline. So how do we actually go about that? Well, first of all, you know, sources of data online are very uh, vast. You've got places like Quandl, and I'm pulling up all the places uh, that we'll talk about here. You got Quandl, and um, and then all kinds of APIs. Like Google has APIs, and Yahoo has APIs, and even like Wikipedia has APIs for stuff. But we're gonna focus on. Um, well, we're not going to use Quandl actually in this in this series probably, but this is a really useful place to gather information. But we're going to use Yahoo Finance's API. So um, this is just for the record. But the, like you can look up the quotes here, and then you, you can find the link to the quotes. But we'll end up just writing it in, and I'll give you a straight link. But we'll be using Yahoo Finance's API to get stock prices. So what we're going to do first is uh, let's start by first of all. To get that data, we'll get rid of this plotting stuff, and we'll do uh, let's let's create a function out of this. So we're gonna define graph underscore data, and we're gonna graph data for a specific stock. So this is kind of the same sort of code. We'll end up building something pretty similar to what I've built in the past, uh, where you can just type in the stock's name and it'll graph that. So for now, we'll, we'll push this over. And then we'll have down here, we'll call graph data, and then we'll pass through a stock. For now, let's do uh, let's do Tesla, so TSLA, that's for the electric cars. So uh, graph data stock, and then so what we're going to start with is, um, first we need the stock price URL. Stock price URL is going to be, um, this will be HTTP colon slash slash and I think I will just have us, I'll put the link in the description. It's pretty certain I'll forget to put the link in the description. So if I forget, someone do please remind me and I will put the link in the description as soon as possible. But here is the link. I don't want to waste time typing it out. But basically, this is the finance API. Uh, this is where we input the dynamic stock, whatever that happens to be. And then we have chart data. And this is the other, this is one variable and this is another variable. We're just hard coding it, but this is like 10 years of data that we want. One thing to note, if you decide to go off on your own little tangent here and you decide to change this to things like one day, when you're using anything greater, I think than 10 days, uh, the prices you get or the date stamps are in like real, like legible date stamps, uh, or at least somewhat legible. But if you get down below 10 days, you're going to get Unix time. We'll cover how to handle Unix time, but just understand if you try to get ahead of me, you're going to be like, uh, oh, unconverted data. Um, and that's why. So anyways, uh, moving right along, stock price URL. Good. Got it. Next, um, we're going to say the source code of that URL is going to be equal to, and we are going to have to incorporate URL lib for this one. So let's bring in, um, actually we're gonna need a few things on top of this. So let's go ahead and import URL lib. And then we're also gonna do uh, import matplotlib.dates as mdates. So matplotlib has its own little date converter called mdates or date handling called mdates. So we're gonna utilize that. Anyway, source code is equal to URL lib.request.url open and then we want to open this stock price URL and then we want to read and anytime you read stuff in Python 3 you'll you can just add the decode there um, we're gonna end up decoding it anyways this may not actually be useful but we'll put that there anyway uh, then we're gonna say stock data is gonna be an empty list and then we're going to say the split source equals the source code dot split by a new line. So the first thing that we could go ahead and do is we can actually visit this URL to like see what we're working with here. So let's take that copy, paste that, and I'm going to replace that, you know, quote stock with Tesla. So that pulls up this. Okay, so this is the return that we get. 
Now, Tesla hasn't been around for 10 years, so we don't get 10 years of data, but we get like basically five years. Really, really close five years, actually. Anyway, uh, so here's our data, and basically we can see there's some useless data up here, but then as once we get down here, this is all just stock prices. Okay, so that's what we're, really what we're after. And here, this is the year 2010. This is the month 06. This is the day, the 29th. And then you've got open, well, actually, you've got close. Yahoo Finance orders is funky, but you've got close, the high of that day, the low of that day, the open of that day, and then the volume of that day. So volume is how many shares of that company were traded. So our, our source code is going to look basically just like this. Now we're splitting that source code by new line. Then what we need to do is we kind of want to filter out all this junk. Okay. So the, the way that I've done this in the past is to, first of all, check to see if the length of that line split by comma. So splitting by a comma, you should have one element, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. You should have six elements when you split by comma. But, and then the only other line that has six elements when split by comma is this line, right? This has, there's one element, two, three, four, five, and six. So we also just want to just hard code the filtering out of that line. And other than that, we should have all pricing data. So we write a quick um, for loop to basically handle for that. So what we're going to say is uh, for, whoops, not in all caps, for line in split source. What do we want to do? Well, we're going to say split line equals each, or actually we'll just say line, split line equals line dot split, and we split by comma. And then what we're going to do is if len of the split line, so this is where we're asking if it's equal to six, it's got to be exactly six. If it's less than six, we don't want it. If it's more than six, we don't want it. So great. If that's the case, great. And then we also just want to get rid of that line that has like values, date, close, high, low. I just use, use values. So if the term values is not in the line, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to say stock data dot append uh, and we append that line. So now we have the line of data that's basically the year stamp like this. We've got basically this data, right? And this will be, you know, a long line. And then there will be, that's the list element. And then here's a second element, the you know, third and, and onward. So now we've got that. The next thing that we want to do is we need to kind of use NumPy to read this data into variables. So this data goes as date, close price. And I usually do close P uh, because close has a, a meaning. And so does open, for example. So we have close. Uh, high P, low P, open P, and then we have volume. And we say that we're going to unpack to those as we showed before is equal to NP dot load TXT. And the text that we're loading, the text is just this variable, right? So you can load all kinds of stuff with load text. It's not just text. Uh, we load stock underscore data. I'm going to start inserting commas or I mean, <laughs> Of course, I'm going to have commas. I'm going to start inserting uh, new lines here so we don't run off the screen. But stock data, uh, then our delimiter is equal to a comma. Then unpack needs to be equal to true. And then finally, we add a new thing, and that's converters. And we're going to say converters is equal to, and you use a dictionary for this, and you say zero so that we want to convert the zeroth element. That would be date because date right now is just this weird format. Okay, so uh, matplotlib is just not going to recognize that. So we convert that, and then we're going to say in Python 2, this is relatively simple. We use M dates and stuff, and we can convert this, and it works. Uh, but in uh, Python 3, it still, for some reason, does not want to be decoded right. So we have to write our own quick little function. That's okay. So the converters is going to be we're going to convert the zeroth element using the function of bytes. Um, p date to num, and then we specify what the structure of this date is, basically. And so there's all kinds of symbols in date time conversion. Uh, I'm just going to show a few here, but usually at the end of the day, you use the following. Okay, you've got percent uh, percent y is like a full year, so 2015, for example. 
and then you've got percent lowercase y, this would be a partial year. Uh, so you might have 15, right? Then you've got, um, so that would be year percent m equals the number month. Uh, percent d would be the number day. And then you've got uh, percent h, which is equal to hours. Percent uh, h m would be minutes. And then you've got percent s, capital s. And that is seconds, okay? So just keep, keep that in mind that there's those. You can look up more if you want, but these are the ones that we're gonna basically need. We actually aren't gonna be even using hours, minutes, seconds here. So in here, the structure of this is a percent capital Y followed immediately by a percent uh, lowercase m followed immediately by a percent lowercase d. So that would be percent Y, percent D, percent, uh, or actually percent M, sorry, and then percent D. If someone had a date that was like, let's say the date was um, 1206, 2014, let's say, so month, day, year, you would have, this would be structured as percent M, then a dash, then percent D, a dash, and a percent capital Y. Okay, so when people add dashes in there, you, you can add them in as well. So anyways, um, now we've got the converters. Now we just need to make that conversion uh, function. So we'll go ahead and um, I think we'll store that conversion function for the next tutorial. And then we'll work on actually graphing this data as well in the next tutorial. We should be able to get this information pulled and graphed within one more tutorial. So anyways, that's what we got for now. If you have any questions or comments up to this point, uh, please do feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.